if we have a tank full of water, or any other liquid, but for now we'll use water at our standard conditions, and we have a hole in the side of it, an orifice in the side of it, then gravity is causing a pressure increase as we go down in the fluid, and that pressure will lead to an acceleration and the fluid will come pouring out of that orifice as a jet. Now we'd like to know how fast that jet is going. We can apply Bernoulli's equation along any streamline as long as there are no significant friction losses or work done on the fluid as it flows along. So if we follow from the surface up here down a streamline, and we could pick any point on the surface, it will eventually wind up coming down to a streamline that goes out through here, through the, through the orifice then we can follow along that streamline from location 1 to location 2. We can write Bernoulli's equation Z1 plus P1 over rho G plus V1 squared over 2G equal to Z2 plus P2 over rho G plus V2 squared over 2g. Now I've chosen points at 2 and 1 to make my life a little easier. I could easily pick any point anywhere along the streamline, but then if I pick this point, its velocity is probably pretty close to zero, but to figure out the pressure I'd have to figure out that depth from there to there and figure out the pressure. Whereas up here, I know that P is equal to atmospheric pressure. Likewise, if this is also exposed to atmosphere, I know that here P is also equal to atmospheric pressure. So P1 and P2 are the same. P1, P2, both atmospheric pressure. So the pressure terms will cancel out. Now again, because I chose position 1 up here on the surface, as long as that hole is really small compared to the cross-sectional area of this whole tank, then the velocity at which this surface is moving down is really small, very close to zero. So V1, very close to zero. So I can cancel that one out. And I'm left with the velocity down here, depending on the difference in the height, in a fairly straightforward way. So if I rearrange that, I'll get that V2 squared is equal to 2G times Z1 minus Z2. the difference in height. So if that distance there is, let's call it 15 meters, down to the orifice where it lets out down there, then I'll wind up with V2 equal to the square root 2 times 9.8 times 15. And if I punch those numbers into my calculator, 2 times 9.8 times 15 square root is 17.1. meters per second. Now suppose I had another orifice down here, a different size, and a jet coming out from it as well. 
So it's a larger orifice. The jet is larger in diameter. I could also draw another streamline that went up here also to the surface. And there's point three, and I could repeat the same analysis all over again. So this might be another three meters down. And I'd have 18 meters instead of 15 meters in this equation. And two times 9.8 times 18 meters this time gives me 352. Square root gives me 18.8 meters per second. So that's how you can figure out the speed at which uh, a flow will come out of an orifice if you neglect friction. And in this case, neglecting friction is a pretty good approximation.